to the Unwritten Podcast, Thomas Malpass. Thank you so much for having me here. So I want to know, who is Catherine Gerard and why are you pursuing what you're pursuing right now? So um, it's hard to say like who I am, like in general, like any human being, who I am is like the essential question, right? The fundamental question, because you could say, well, I'm an artist, but not really. I do art, but that's, that's not who I am, right? So I, um, I like to say that I'm this fragment of consciousness in this world, learning and having I can experience and learning from that point of view um, exactly who I am in that in that experience of life, right? And I feel this whole everything that we experience every second is answering or asking us that question, like at every moment, continuously asking that question. And like you can choose um in any situation who you are like for example if you having an argument with someone and you decide to react or respond in a certain way that's saying who you are in that situation so maybe one day you have an argument with someone and you respond well and then the other day you don't and and you just explode and get into a whole argument, right? And who are you? You are neither of those. It's just uh, how you chose to, to act in that determined situation, right? And we try to lean towards our best version or our best being. Like the good thing about if you wanna say if we are nothing is that we can build ourselves and choose like like a Lego. <laughs> Which Legos do you want to include in that building that you call you, right? So Catherine, who are you right now in this moment speaking to me? So right now I am a very happy being because I am doing the things I truly love to do and I'm having a good life. I'm meeting, making new good friends as I always wanted. And it took me a lot of work to build this and it's finally seeing results from that. So I'm someone who loves art and does art as much as possible and who's learning to to have more empathy and compassion for people, even people who make me bad, which is hard because the first the first reaction is like go to hell. <laughs> but even those people, there's a reason why they do things. And of course you don't accept certain things, but you can understand. And when you understand why they do things, forgiving is not necessary anymore because you know where they come from. It's just like, okay, I wish you the best. I don't accept this in my life, but I really hope you can be better in the future and find some light, right? So I'm trying to be that type of person. <laughs> That's so hard, especially in the social media world we live in today mm. and people you know, it's so easy to just type a hate message. Mm. You know, it's like, it's so easy. Um, like, just think about it. Like, think about back like a hundred years ago. If you were, wanted to really send somebody hate mail, mm. <laughs> like by the time you like got it, you'd forget about what even happened. <laughs> like, like this mail takes like a month to be delivered. Yeah. And like by the time you read it, you're like, what is he even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like that's just the world we live in, you know, and it's it's true. Like you do have to have some sort of empathy, whatever, compassion for these people because they're in a 
place where they want to bring somebody down mm. for whatever reason they they want to do it for amusement they want to do it to embarrass somebody they want to do it just because they feel down and they want to bring you down with them and it's just understanding that in itself mm -hmm. helps you understand and also everyone's entitled to their opinions yeah you know like you could say literally whatever you want that's why we have free speech yeah and whether you like it or not is up to you and that's why it's like I'm against like the whole censorship ship mm -hmm. stuff because people are entitled to their opinions mm -hmm. and bad things happen every day, mm -hmm. but we don't see it. <clears throat> it's only when we see it and people talk about it, then you bring up the cancel culture or, and then, then we just go in this endless cycle. And I think it's, it's about understanding that, understanding who you are, like how you said, who you are right now, what you stand for, and not letting these people bring you down with them. Yeah, exactly, because people who lack purpose or something to fight for, they will always try to bring down the people who are in the field doing something. Like re recently, I was watching uh, blogs from a girl who started ballet as an adult, and she is a very good dancer, actually. Like the only thing that tells that she is an adult beginner is her turn out, which is having like your legs can uh, rotate outwards. And the, she, you can see that she doesn't rotate as much. And that's the only thing because as, apart from that, all her bra, I'm sorry, her arms, uh, not bra, that's French for arms, actually. <laughs> um, they they are perfect. So she's sharing her journey on how she ended up at 27 claiming her dream back of being a ballerina. And she gets hate comments of people saying, oh, you're so bad, uh, you're, you're going to make it, and things like that. And it's bored people. They don't have anything else to do they have given up on their dreams themselves so they they just pay their frustration with someone who's actually doing something yeah i don't i don't subscribe to that no nah, it's uh uh and when you look at her and when she's like talking about the things she's doing. You can see the shine on her eyes. Like she's totally passionate about that. And it's so inspiring uh, for any artist. Like I do music, I did ballet. I was also like a late beginner with ballet and I understand her totally. And so it's so beautiful. And it's very sad when someone sees that and their reaction is like hate trying to pull you down because they don't have that spark in their eyes for anything. I think what's even sadder than that is the people that tried to do something like that and let those people stop them. Yeah. I think that's even sadder. How many people have tried to pursue something that lit them up only to be brought down you know mm. yeah there's many people like that and that's why it's so good that people like this girl are sharing i try to do the same like on my own way to share my experience and all those people who are out there sharing their experiences pursuing something is very inspiring because then those who are pursuing something and not necessarily want to share the journey but it's a motivation for them to say, hey, I'm not alone on this. Like, there's someone else in the same struggle. So I keep, I'll keep going there's, because there's, I have mates out there. Even if I don't know them personally, I have those people I vibrate with. Um, so even if you don't know them at all just by their content it inspires you to keep going and not 
quit on something just because. And whatever you do, you're going to have people who hate you for that. So if it's dance, if it's music, if it's whatever thing that is not a normal path of life that everybody chooses, you always have someone to have an opinion. So they don't matter. Like when you die, you are not going to be thinking about John 145 saying this comment, <laughs> you know. You, it's not going to matter. You are going to think about, wow, all the time that I wasted and why didn't I, what would have happened if I just dared to pursue this, right? So. Yeah. No, I, I love that. Like, I always tell people, like, I do what I do and I try new things because I understand that life is short. Mm. And me understanding that life is short i want to do something and that's that's what why i started this podcast to listen to other people's stories about their lives and maybe somebody listening it can inspire them in whatever way mm -hmm. it can it can be that light that they need to be sparked mm -hmm. it can be that light at the end of the tunnel yeah you know yeah it's so, so so important to keep listening to that all the time because it's um we've been programmed with a lot of bad things in and beliefs in our heads so if you if you stop nourishing your mind with other people who are in the journey or motivational videos or of any kind you will keep forgetting you need reminders of why are you doing things so it's important to keep listening and keep connecting somehow with people who who are in the same vibe as you because sadly most of the people are like in pilot autopilot mode and sadly when you grow it confronts the other people to the things they are not doing and that they should be doing therefore they, the envy starts, jealousy starts, trying to bring you down again will start. So not everybody. That's when you know who your true friends are, the ones who see you growing and root for you and support you and tell you keep going and they have a sincere support for you and sincere friendship towards you. And those who send, maybe they say passive aggressive comments, disguised as jokes, you know, or they telling you that why so much? Why having those goals? Just you are okay the way you are. Um, you are boring now because you don't go every weekend to get uh, drunk or things like that. Or, or oh, wow, you were funnier before, things like that. It's like, Maybe they are good people, but they are not going to help you emotionally to reach your goals. Therefore, it's not that you have to be like, out of my life. It's just, okay, I just don't pay attention to that. And I keep going and the vibration will just do its work, you know. And naturally, organically, those who don't reinforce your journey will just spread apart, you know, like go just organically. There's no need to create any drama <laughs> or anything like that. Where do you think you, you get this mindset from? Like, do you think you just, it, it was natural or was it like years of listening to like motivational stuff like me or reading books and trying to figure it out on your own? Where do you think you get that mindset from? Well, I had, well, my parents, they obviously, they're not perfect, but they always taught me things like do things right, put the dedication, the work on doing the best work possible on whatever you are doing. They, uh, they both taught me to pay attention to the details, to always go the extra mile and everything. And that certainly um, helped a lot. And then my dad was always like, you have to do what you love doing. Like the, we both don't believe in that phrase that says you have to earn your living. Like 
uh, ganarse la vida in Spanish. So it's like a, to, to win, to earn, because we are already alive. Life is something that was already given to us. It's our gift. So you can earn money, you can earn notoriety, you can earn reputation, but you earn a living. It's like, no, you already have your life for you. You just build a life like you, you sculpt it the way you would like it. So he always encouraged me to, to do the things I really felt passion about and not fell, fall into that trap that many people fall into that, oh, you have to do this thing because it's what is giving money, allegedly. Uh, right now, like many people chose their career, uh, get, getting out of the school, um, based on what was trendy at the time we finished the school. So at my generation, it was engineering. So everybody wants to be uh, going to the preparation school for engineering. But maybe in five years, when you finish your career, that's not trendy anymore. And you just chose based on that, on what you were told would solve your life. And like you will get that dream job that will pay you a lot of money. And that's not even true. When you are young, you start from low and you have to build your way up. And it doesn't even depend on what studies you have. Like there's many people who dropped out college and they build amazing careers and are much better than many people who have three, four, five careers, you know. So it doesn't depend on that. Um, it's the ability to keep learning and growing and having a, a specific goal, like in everything, like what type of relationship, relationship do I want to have? What type of friends do I want to have? Well, how much do I want to earn? monthly or yearly like you have to be specific and have a vision like really close your eyes and imagine your ideal day in detail and that gives you like a guide and the actions to do to get there um not just oh i need to make money and everybody tells me that this is the way i i will it's, it's just it's, it's not gonna work <laughs> it's gonna be a dead end so that helped me and then mm, knowledge and discovering people like Tony Robbins, spirituality a lot, even astrology in the sense not like, oh, I read my astral chart and this is who I am and that's it. No, it's rather like a, like a self-discovery tool that you can use and say, oh, that's my potential, that, those are my qualities that I can use to get to my goals. And those might be my weaknesses. So ca how can I work on them? It's a different way of- no, I actually spoke, yeah, I actually spoke to uh, like an astrology tarot reader uh, lady mm -hmm. on my podcast. And she told me basically like astrology, even her like making a living doing tarot reading like for like 20 years now she said it doesn't impel you it compels you like mm -hmm. it doesn't impel like it doesn't like you don't have to follow it perfectly exactly and that's how you should live your life mm -hmm. it compels you as like a sort of an inspiration like hmm that's interesting yeah i don't know that's how that's how i always seen it i always seen it as just interesting it's just interesting to see how sometimes not all the time these stories around whatever it is tarot spirituality re reiki reading past lives reading astrology i just see it as it's interesting right it's interesting and some things may align, some things may not, and it's just a story. It's a very complex, it's like your astral chart really is this photograph of, of the moment where you were born. So it's like the whole universe with being you and is unique and you won't find exact same astral charts. It's always a little difference. 
even with twins, like one twin is born at a certain time and then the other might be born half an hour later and that's already enough to change the chart. So it's not going to be completely yeah. exactly the same. And so it's very, very twins. complex. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. And yeah, so they're different. Yeah. And so the thing also is that each thing in the astral chart has like a positive meaning and a negative meaning. And so, for example, if I have the sun, the square, Mars, it's an alignment, I have the, that. And it could be like, I'm very impulsive and, and I tend to enter into arguments really easily. That, that was like that when I was a teenager. But then when you integrate that energy, you could be a great leader. So you can choose which energy do you want to embody? Like, I want to integrate that so I can become a good leader, like the potential. So it's just the potential that is there. And it's your free will, because that's like a law of the universe, the free will that many people don't believe in, but I do believe in it. Like, you have... You have Who doesn't believe in free will? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't believe in that? There are people who are like, um, <laughs> it's destiny. We don't really have like a choice, uh, especially like when you when you read uh, Greek tragedies, they are like, no, fate, destiny, uh, Oedipus couldn't have done anything different than what he did and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's a matter of consciousness and that if you know, yeah. If you know, oh, I have the potential to be either a great leader or an impulsive person, susceptible person, then I can choose to work on myself to channel my potential and my energy to something positive. It's, it's awareness, it's consciousness, it's like designing yourself each day, each minute, like being present and not just let life carry you like if you were in a river <laughs> that you have no control on the boat so you could go somewhere nice or you can go down the pitfall <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes life is a river hmm. and it's and it's up to you to decide if you want to jump off and start walking your own path. Mm -hmm. So, Catherine, you're from Peru. As well. And where are you now? I prefer not to say for safety reasons. I never. Really? <laughs> yeah. Can you say the continent? Um. Well, no. <laughs> Somebody's going to track you. It's complicated. It's complicated. Well, my point is, you're not in Peru anymore. No. So, wherever you are now, how did you move out of Peru and start, I guess, traveling around the world and become a nomad of sorts? So I always wanted to travel. That's another dream of mine. And first I went to France because I'm also half French. And I started there. Then I lived in a couple countries. And yeah, traveling was always a dream of mine. And it's lovely because you it widens your horizons. You start learning about other ways of living and you start understanding that there's not one way to do things. There's different ways, some better than others, but it gives you empathy for other people. Like, again, to learn to understand them more and it gives you more flexibility. Like, you don't have you have less expectations of how things should be because you understand, oh, but that country, actually in this country, they do things this other way because they have other traditions. Okay, so um, there's no need to 
to demand a certain certain way, certain yeah, yeah, ways of doing things. Therefore, you are more open to different possibilities and more open to learn, and that enriches your life a lot. Like a, a very good example is I already come from a country that makes really good food, but then I discovered Indian food or Japanese food, Korean food, French food, Spanish food. And wow, and I can introduce that in my repertoire of food. And that only enriches my life because now I'm surrounded by a lot of different, very, very different, but delicious food. And that's like an example of my life being better because of uh, that. It's fun no, it's funny because I traveled a little bit when I was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And I remember some people were stubborn. Mm -hmm. like they didn't appreciate that. They didn't appreciate the fact that we were in a different country and there were new things to explore mm -hmm. and try. I remember specifically one time a fellow sailor of mine mm -hmm. uh, was saying, man, I just want a burger and some fries. Mm -hmm. I don't want to try this whatever mm -hmm. that they have here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's just, I don't know. It's that just says something about s certain people, I guess. Some people travel only physically, but not mentally. And they don't let mm. the situation or the experience get into them. So it's a bit like a waste because they've never, spiritually, they never went out of their little comfort zone. And sometimes, and many people travel mentally and not physically, like they stay in their own country, but they get out of their comfort zone all the time. And so it's more of the attitude you have towards life, even more than actually traveling. I feel like I do that a lot. I'm a very open-minded person. And and that's exactly what you explained it basically like perfectly. Traveling opens your mind up more. It opens your mind up to new cultures, new experiences and just the world we live in, right? We, you're not just living in that small town. Like there's more to life than wherever you are, wherever you feel stuck, there's more to life. Mm. So tell me about your artistic and creativity. Uh, <laughs> tell me about what you're pursuing now and how you, I guess, turned your creativity and passion for art I guess how, I don't want to say earn a living now. How did you, how did you live while doing that? So um, right now what I'm pursuing is that I'm studying for becoming a movie soundtrack composer, which is very exciting. Um, I love storytelling. I love cinema. I love music. So that's like the perfect path for me to follow. And it's like a long format, right? Because a movie can last between one hour and a half and two hours, which I feel is perfect for like expressing myself in more detail and more, more instrumentation and more things that maybe I can do with normal songs, which I will keep doing, of course, because I love that as well. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting perspective. And so that's what I'm pursuing right now. And I wanted to add on to that. So first, tell me, what is your favorite story to tell? Mm, about what? Um, Just anything. Um, so one of my favorite stories to tell is um, there is this book by Jules Verne called The Green Ray. 
that is about this girl that he, she has two uncles and they want to marry her to a scientist. Uh, but she's a dreamer and very romantic person. And she read in the newspaper this legend about a green ray that you can only see at sunset in, in the sea when the sea is completely calm and there's not one single um, cloud on the, on the sky. And so when everything is so clear and so calm, you see the sunset and right when the sun is about to set, you, there is an optical illusion where you can literally see a green ray. And in the, in the story was said, the legend says that whoever manages to see the green ray, they will be gifted with the ability to see in, within the heart of people. Um, so she's like, I am not getting married until I see the green ray. So she's a little bit, she's a very good girl, but is a bit spoiled by the uncles because she's an orphan and everything. So they kind of let her do her thing. So they all go into this vacation in the hybrid islands because it happens in Scotland and they go try to find this green ray and she meets someone in the meantime, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I'm not going to spoil the ending. The point is that I was like, did Jules Verne invented this legend of the green ray or is this a real physical phenomenon that happens? And according to Wikipedia, it is something that happens. And so when I was in Mexico, I went to this island called Cozumel and it was the sunset. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. Really? It's amazing. Yeah. And there was no cloud. The sea was calm. And I saw the green ray. I saw it. So it exists. This is a magical. And I was like, <laughs> I child jumping around. I see it. I see it. Wait, you really seen it? Yes, I swear. It ha it, it exists. It's Can you tell me what's in my heart? Ah, uh, you look like an introverted but very nice, authentic person, but like very calm. At least here with me. I don't know if with people who know you better, but you look like <laughs> that to me. I look like that? I said what's in my heart, not what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel right now. But I don't know about that part of the legend. I just know that physically the green ray does exist. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a phenomenon that happens in the sea, maybe because of how the light is reflected or something. So no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's a great book, by the way. It's super fast to read. It's a short novel by him, by Jules Verne. You mm. read it in an afternoon, like in a couple hours, even less. You're done with it. It's super beautiful. I recommend that, that book, by the way. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And I just, I wanted to demonstrate the, because I, I really believe in what you're doing as well. I love music in general. I don't know who doesn't. Um, I'm also very open-minded when it comes to music. I listen to everything from hardcore metal to... Uh, the hand pan <laughs> that just like I, literally like I, i'll listen to the hand pan just to like help me relax and get focused like tropical you know like the hand pan tropical sound um but i want to demonstrate and actually that's a good visualization that you just gave about the ocean being clear blue skies no clouds the water's calm it's a sunny day and you probably know this song but i want to show the difference between imagine that peaceful peaceful scenery and this song Yeah, that totally fits. 
Do you know that? No. And then imagine, well, I'll tell you afterwards. Imagine that same scenery, but with this song. It would be like a very scary sunset. So these these songs I just played were from Jurassic Park, the original one. Yeah. And that has some of the best themes and like composed music. Um, I'll, yeah. I think so, yeah. I think John Williams, yeah. Now that you said Jurassic Park sounds like John Williams. I think that, yeah, John Williams. Yeah, but that just shows the power of why it's important and what you're doing is important. And I support that. Thanks. So how are you gonna how are you gonna achieve that? For now I'm studying. I um subscribed to a program that's called Momentum Program. They they do that, exactly that, like educating people to become a soundtracks composers and you work with people who are in Hollywood. So there's, for example, Christian Young, who does some workshops in that program. He did a Spider-Man, um, people like that. So that's awesome because you are working with people that are already in the industry and they can tell you not only about the musical aspect of things, but also about the business side of that industry. And, and you have a community with fellow students and you can stay up to date with how the industry is evolving, right? That's very important. So, yeah, very exciting. Do you have any anything that you could share with us that you're working on? As, as soundtracks on my YouTube channel, I created like, I am creating like small comedy movies that I do myself, like they mm. last two weeks. And it's just an excuse to create a soundtrack over that. And mm. for now, I posted two on my main channel, which is Catherine Gerard. But I'm going to do a dedicated channel for those uh, little movies. So I did one about for, for Valentine's Day. There is a horror parody movie about Valentine's. And the other one is about ghosting. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, it's funny. Uh, it doesn't sound funny, but I made it funny somehow. It's a, because many people have been ghosted. Like I have friends that that complain with me about that. Like this person seems so nice, and then they just disappear. So which is so unfair and and cruel, right? When someone ghosts you, and it can happen in like romantic relationships, but also with friends. So I did a movie about that and, and what you should do when that happens to you. Just focus on yourself, on uh, getting better, on, yeah, on making yourself better in like in exercise, etc. And then if they come back, just um, like if nothing happened, just not engage with them anymore. Um, so that was fun to do because it led me to explore different styles of music from classical to rock to some big band type of blues music, which is not my field of expertise, but I could do something fun with that one. And yeah, that was very, very interesting to, to create. It's funny that you brought up ghosting. Um <clears throat> If anybody's listened to this and you've been ghosted, respect the dead and move on. And if they come back, I don't know. What if they come back? Depends on how they come back because some people really went through certain things. So yeah. when they come back, they are like, hey, I'm sorry, I disappeared. So they are aware they disappeared. 
I've been through those things, if they want to say what it was, or I've been through personal stuff that was tough, and I want to make it up to you, I want to be in contact again, etc. then you can yeah. say, okay, it was... But some people are back like, hey, do we do something this Friday? Like, just want to see if you're still available. And like, if nothing happened, if, you know, and yeah. those are the ones you just block. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess it really just depends on where you're meeting these people, what type of relationship you're getting into. Is it just friend? Is it a family member? Is it dating? Um, but yeah, I, I totally understand, but I also agree that if anybody goes to you, it's not necessarily about you, you know, it's not really about you. I mean, it might be, but that's also their opinion and you just have to move on with your life. Like don't waste so much energy on the what ifs because all those what ifs you're thinking of is just wasted energy when you could be directing that energy towards the what if possibilities of your dreams, goals, ambitions, aspirations, and not getting so caught up in this person. I would say it's always about them because that you should never take it personal because even if you did something like to be to deserve to be ghosted you need to do really something really really bad for that but if none of it happened someone who is mature will tell you what's going on like hey i don't think we are a good fit thank you and sorry i don't want to waste your time so and you end things like nicely and in an adult way right but if they are if they aren't even able to tell you what's wrong or, or they it just they just are doing you a favor because you don't want to have like it's impossible to have a healthy relationship any type of relationship with people who do that you they are sparing you a lot of problems and a lot of drama when they disappear like that so yeah i agree so on your artistic and creative journey, you made an NFT. Yeah. How was that? Because I, when NFTs like exploded, I was following that and people were making millions of dollars. And then it kind of just died off, like that whole market. So what are, your, what are your thoughts on that? And how has that NFT art journey, how's that look so like? For making millions of dollars, first you have to have a very strong brand. Like they were people. The bored apes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, like they were people, even if they were like an anonymous on the NFT market, maybe they were people who used to animate for Disney, for example, or for Pixar, and they did an NFT with animation, for example, and they already had like a, a brand on their own and contacts and things. And so those big people are the ones who made that amount of money. And then you have people who don't have that, but they started to build their brands on the NFT world. And so it's about building your brand there to go into, it, it moves a lot on Twitter. You go on Twitter, Twitter spaces, you talk about the things you do, you show your music. Like I was playing and sing, playing the harp and singing one original song and it was always the same and people love to hear that, to listen to that. And so I went to contests, I... I was talking with people, making friends with people. And so you meet collectors, the collectors are there. And it's like, um, you have to treat it a little bit like if it was the art industry, like like paintings, uh, you know, the art investment type of thing that you buy a piece of art, a painting or something. So it's a little bit like that. Like um, you create your piece of art. In my case, it was one of my songs with just a picture of my cover art for the album uh, just to test the waters 
And yeah, it's about the people you meet and also other creators buy NFTs. Like I bought a couple NFTs from other creators that I like. So it's more of a support type of thing. And then you can have utilities, like for example, the NFT could be, give you, it could unlock like a discount for a concert or it is the entrance for a concert, like, like a ticket for a concert, or maybe if you're a painter, you selling the NFT means you are selling the real painting, for example, and you send the actual painting to the person who has bought the NFT, for example. And so it's very interesting, a really good vibe with the people. And I know of people who have created their brand from scratch on that NFT world, and it did, not die, but like lowered a lot because the market, the, the cryptocurrency market in general was going through something called the bear market. So you have the the bear market and the other one, which I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, the bear yeah. is because go to hibernation and it's everything is low. Like everything uh, the coins the nfts etc and so that that was the the thing that, that was what what happened and so the nfts kind of depend a little bit on the rest of the market so yeah <laughs> are you still fo <laughs> are you still following it <laughs> you still follow you still follow it a little bit like for now i couldn't find the time to de develop the collection, the one-on-one -on -one collections that I want to do, which is going to be called Harp Dreams. And it's going to have little compositions for Harp that I'm creating. So I'm working on that. Um, and once I have something to show, I will go back to it because I didn't see much of a sense to be there without something to to provide yeah no i like that it's kind of like you see it not just because i seen it like just as like this like weird crypto market art thing that just popped out of nowhere and when i was when i was like getting into it and even thinking about buying some it was like 2020 2021 it was like blowing up people were making millions and then it went into this long bear market like it's been in a bear market for a while now and i like the way you see it you see it as just like an expression of how you can express your art but also how you can support what you're doing at the same time mm -hmm. it's it's like a, another way that's being presented and for music especially it's very beneficial because it brings the value back like with all those streaming platforms value of music has gone down and like oh, yeah. you can have endless copies of a song that you can download for 99 cents on itunes i think people still value the physical though like there's like my sister for example she collects um vinyl records of all her yeah favorite. there's still there's still people, especially in certain genres like rock, uh, more cla more like older people genres, because they grew up with these, because they like to have something tangible. It's not gonna go away. Like you can still do that. It's just yeah. now with the NFTs, you have just another tool to add to your. Toolbox. to your collection exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well Catherine I feel like you're you're on this journey and you're excited about what the future holds for you I want to know what you would tell somebody that maybe earning a living like you're saying and not just living their life that wants to start expressing themselves expressing their creativity 
and passions. What would you tell that person? I would say that you have one life, as far as we know. Like, I believe in reincarnation, but for now, there's no, there doesn't yeah. seem to be like a evidence. really strong evidence. <laughs> um, for now, yeah. let's stick to we have one life. And even if we have others, you probably won't remember that one. So, um, one shot, just use it and whatever people think doesn't matter. And it doesn't mean you have to leave your job at once. You need a plan, but you have to start somewhere. And maybe that somewhere, if your dream is painting, maybe is going once a week to a painting school. That's a beginning, like do something small. You don't need to have this great demonstration, right? It's something small that you do for yourself and you build from there and just let it show you the way. Like it's gonna start to flow, you know, when you go into your, what you are meant to do, you don't need to have the whole path already mapped out. You just need the first steps. And so if you do the first small step, then the following step is gonna is gonna appear, right? Like a light, like a small light. And then you just keep going. You don't need to have everything figured out from the beginning. It's, this is a game, so have fun. Don't don't take it that seriously. You know, I, I want to paint. That makes me happy. Go to the go to school. Find other people to paint with. Make new friends get good at it and then life <laughs> what, is, what is that what is this <laughs> just start you know with the simplest thing you can start with with the simplest thing <laughs> no I, I love that because <clears throat> Sometimes people do take life too seriously. And it's like you can't. Like, how do you truly live life if you take life so seriously? You have to have fun sometimes. Yeah, this is like a playground. And all everything like money, resources, people, clothes, fashion, gadgets phones, all of this is the toys. And when you get out of the playground, aka you die, all the toys are gonna stay here. So use them, share them, play with other people, have fun. Yeah, have fun. If there's anything from this podcast, just have fun with life. Take it day by day. Take those baby steps, maybe. See how you feel, you know. The fun in building your dream life. And that mm. means that sometimes you work on things that are like a routine and that like you have to say no to certain things that people qualify as fun, like going to parties and getting drunk every week or eating junk food and low quality activities in general. And we have to learn to find the fun and true satisfaction of doing the hard work. Every day you sit down and you do your thing and that's much more meaningful because it's something that nourishes you forever. Like when you achieve something, when you learn something, it doesn't only satisfy you when you actually achieve to learn that thing, but every time you remember and every time you use that skills, it nourishes you again and again. Whereas when you just, okay, you buy a bag, let's say a expensive bag, it's fun in the moment you buy it and then what? And that's why many that's why the Kardashians this have the, so many hair. Yeah, <laughs> this is the materialism world. It's like you don't get joy in the materials. I mean, some. I mean, you may, but it's short lived. You may get it, but it's short lived. It doesn't last. Um, 
that feeling when you initially buy it, it doesn't last a lifetime. And that's what people get addicted to that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, think... Because they are trying to get that from outside instead of inside, inside them. Inside, yeah. And enjoy those things. I I love fashion. I love bags, but I know very well where the true satisfaction lies, and that's that's something we have to keep in mind. It's not not buy the bag or don't enjoy fashion and material things. It's enjoy them, but you know that's not where you get your real satisfaction from. It's just another yeah. type of. Um, fun <laughs> find the find the satisfaction in the work that you want to pursue it's about it's cliche but it, it really is about the journey that you're on not the destination because there's always going to be another destination that's life and that's it no i'm just kidding <laughs> um Ready to play this game? All right, completely random. Let's go. And I have, I actually have a meeting in a couple of minutes, but I want to do the game, so. Oh, you have a meeting? Yeah, but don't worry, we. These can be rapid fire then. Yes, we can. We can do it quickly because I want to do this. Do you have time for the last questions too? Yeah, yeah, because uh, the uh, the person hasn't sent me said, told me anything yet. So let's do it. So I just completely picked these random. Share something nobody knows about something I pretended to know more about than I actually do. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Can you read? You can read it. Nobody knows something I pretend to know more about than I actually do. Not really. You don't pretend. How about just share something you pretend to do sometimes if you can't think of anything? Okay, so I was asking you like something I pretend to know more than I do like right now or in the past because right now I don't really pretend. <laughs> um, I guess whatever, whatever comes to mind. So what, what comes to my mind was when at some point I worked for uh, like a, is it, um, how you, customer service for a company yeah. and to get, to get in the job, like I adorned my CV a little bit <laughs> because the, the jobs are so, so silly, like they are, we want 20 years old people who have 10 years experience in this thing, right? And so they ask for stupid things. Therefore, you put stupid things in your CV, like you adorn it, you exaggerate a little bit, you phrase it in a certain way that it makes you look nice. Not necessarily lying. It's not lying. It's just enhancing yourself a little bit you know yeah so um i didn't last for long in that job it was very draining and no i've done you something couldn't similar yeah. yeah yeah so that that's that's it you couldn't even help the customers because of the protocols they had that you had to follow and they were more focused on how many calls or how many emails you were able to respond to um, per hour rather mm. than solving the customer's problems, right? And I was trying to solve customer's problems. Therefore, I was uh, doing less emails per hour. Therefore, I didn't last long in that job. 
which was a blessing <laughs> that I went out of it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes life happens like that. Um, like things happen sometimes the way you want them to and sometimes not the way you want them to. And then when you reflect on it, it could tell a, a story to you. Um, it's always on your benefit, I believe. Like it always leads you to where you have to be, where you're meant to be. Yeah. And I think a note on pretending, I think sometimes it's okay to pretend if you don't believe in yourself. It's okay to pretend like you do know what you're doing or you pretend, play pretend with the person that you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or don't even that, like you don't need to believe in yourself to do the things like the action and the believing is two different things. And if you think about it, like if um, someone tells you they have experience on X, Y, Z thing, you will only believe them if they give you some evidence that they know how to do this. Like They had other clients or other experiences where they did what they're saying they do. Therefore, you believe them. So it's the same with yourself. Like you need to build that evidence for yourself that you are capable of doing something. And then confidence comes. So the affirmations alone won't do much if you don't put the the work. Yeah. Sometimes all it takes to start believing in yourself is to actually do stuff. <laughs> You ready for my last questions? Yes. And then I have to rush to the other meeting. You have to rush? I don't like yeah, rushing people. It was supposed to be at 3 p.m. What time is it there? Three and a quarter. A quarter past three. Oh, well, that, <laughs> that kind of tells me where you are. <laughs> it's, it's a secret because it's too where I am anyways the first question is what is your biggest regret oh so when I was 15 I wanted to start ballet and I went to a school they didn't accept me first at the at the regular program but I was in the adults program and I was learning well and then I talked with a director that was a silly woman. And she was like, no, we only accept child's children, sorry, until 13 years old and you are 15, like two years only. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's too late. And of course you will be able to do certain things, but never at the, a good level or something. And I was sad and I kind of believed her. And I kept doing ballet for three years more, but then I got on point and there wasn't just not good people, like not good classes where they would take adults on point as seriously. So the classes that I found were quite bad and too much for the level I was actually in. And I was doing things that were too hard for me. And I was wondering how didn't I, uh, how do you say, break an ankle or something with those classes so I stopped yeah it was it was hardcore I stopped and then when I was when I sometime later I met a professional ballet dancer and he told me you were actually on time like she was stupid 15 years old still on time so I don't know why she did why she said this but you were on time and I do have the physique for doing ballet, like everybody thought I was in the regular program. And so I was very sad and my regret was letting her take that away from me instead of making the effort, look for another, like keep going, keep pushing until I would show her I can do this, right? Uh, therefore, I just went back to ballet yesterday. That's crazy because um, we actually yeah. talked about that in the beginning of the podcast about not letting yeah. people tell you how what to, you can do yeah 
Um, yeah, so I that was my regret. Um, I said, okay, I'm still on time. Um, yeah. I'll do it. So I I just went back to it, and the teacher was very nice. She also got shocked when I told her the director was like, no, 50 years is too old, and she was like, sorry. And, and she received me, and I was actually pretty well for not dancing in a while. Like, I haven't forgotten many things. Some things I did forget, that's normal. But I'm in pretty good shape for for the time I've been not dancing. So, so that's a good it's hope. <laughs> uh, my next question is, who or what? made the biggest impact in your life so far that makes you who you are? Wow. Um, I guess uh, there's many, like everything, I believe everything that happens in your life is to shape you the way you have, you're meant to be for the purpose you have. So there's many people who influenced me and many situations in life and the ability to take the right lessons from situations like the same happened to me in music like oh musicians also have to start early and you don't sing well etc and for some reason i didn't pay attention with music like maybe that was the way the the way it was meant to be like with music i never had this oh i believe them they are right i never like i was more stubborn with the singing maybe i wanted it more so I never listened to that, and now I sing. So that's good. My next question is: What is one lesson you learned the hard way? Yeah, I, I, I would say, yeah, there is one. There is one when I was very young in a school. We all, we all have this phase of being young and stupid. And I remember I was friends with someone that I wouldn't be friends with if I met them today. And there was this other girl at the school that people would talk badly about her. And this friend of mine would talk badly about her. And I was stupid enough to just believe it with no context at all and I just said something stupid and then realized the girl was behind and listened and heard that and I felt really bad because then it's like why did you say that like I realized I learned two things one never talk at the back of someone I promised myself I never ever would do that again and I never ever did especially with no evidence of what you're saying. Uh, if you don't know the person, obviously, even if you know them, you shouldn't be talking in the bags. But that was the first one. And the second one is uh, whoever you surround yourself with will take either the best or the worst out of you. And it's an influence, no matter how strong will you have, they always influence you. And so I was with people who were low quality and therefore I was becoming low quality and I was like, no. Okay. My next question is, what would you want to experience in life if you had all the time and all the money in the world? I will be traveling and making music and dancing all day. I love that. That sounds really fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I have to, like, I feel like I have to be a little drunk to to dance. How do you get over that? Well, because I like dancing. <laughs> if you don't like dancing, that's normal, I guess. It's, uh, well, you no. have to do use... Yeah. Go ahead. You have to like that in order to do it, you know. Well, Everybody there was has one time it. I had like a super crazy fun drunk night where I danced with this random lady. Uh, we were on a cruise 
and I danced with this random lady. We were doing, um, I don't even know what it's called. What It's like a Spanish style dance where you go like, Fleming. like you go back and forth, like you go back and forth. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, um, but we were doing that for like a long time. It was like it had to be like twenty minutes or so, mm-hmm. and uh, just in that short amount of time, I got good at it, and we started to get a crowd around us, <laughs> and <laughs> we were just going ham with this dancing and. <laughs> Afterwards, when it finally finished, people like cheered us on. Mm-hmm. Like, woo, like that was awesome. I was like, what, what just happened right now? I don't know how to dance, and she like taught me how to dance in the moment, and it was so that's fun. amazing. Yeah, it was so fun. But my last question, Catherine Gaillard is anything you'd like to share with the audience to resonate with them Mm, yeah i would say learn from your mistakes the right lesson there's everything that happens is to your benefit even the things that seem horrible it's all for your good if you know how to take the right lesson out of it never stop doing what really makes you happy and don't listen to the haters. Every ha- everybody has them. Even Jesus has. <laughs> so I say that same thing. I tell people that all the time. You're always gonna mm. have haters. It's always gonna be a yin and a yang, light side, mm-hmm. dark side. I think yeah. what helps is having your right intentions. If you go in it with the right intentions, atten- intentions from a place of peace happiness compassion love and people still do that know that your intentions were pure and none of that bullshit matters Catherine Garrard everybody go check her out on YouTube go check out her NFT art Um, go check out her music and Follow her journey. Maybe she'll be in one of the big mo- movies as a prominent composer one day. Go check her out. No, she will. You will. And as always, everybody, stay curious. Keep going. You got this. Peace. <laughs>